you look at all these the gold records and platinum records and stuff in the wall, does it seems like, does that ever intimidate you? I mean, you, you come in here and you, the idea of living up to expectations and the record company expects you to sell X number of records and uh, your fans want every record to be a real good record and, and, uh, and you, I guess, want to make sure each thing is as good or better, you know, perhaps than the last one. Uh, so I think this would have a comforting effect that all the success and the attention you've gotten, but also it, does it make you, does it intimidate you in, in a different way? Uh, maybe it does. Uh, I'm not real sure. I don't come in here very often. Uh, uh, this is like the past as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I see these things and uh, I know that it's past. It doesn't pertain to what I do now. I still have to concern myself with the song that I'm writing today, with the record that I'm making, with the performance that I'm doing tonight. Uh, these are the things that you really think about. This is past and it's wonderful and you know, I couldn't be happier about it. But What's always impressed me about your career, and I remember seeing you at the Troubadour back when you were doing Solitary Man and Cherry Cherry in, in the 60s when you were just, I guess, starting over again. I'm um, still doing Solitary Man and Cherry Cherry. Well, it's good, because they're good, uh, I love good songs. Yeah. Um, is, most people in rock seem to, once they have success with something, they hold on to that. It's, uh, they, they'll ride it out as long as, because they're afraid if they change, the public's not going to like what they do next. But you kept changing it. I mean, you, you've walked away from record companies, you had new challenges with different record companies. Uh, you went to Vegas, you went to Broadway, you went into films. Uh, what is it that gave you the, is, it, is that confidence that you were able to do that? Or is it, is it, is it in a sense that you're striving for, for greater recognition? Or do you know that if you stick in one thing, you're going to bore yourself? What is it that it kind of enables you to keep moving ahead like that? Uh, I suppose there's a certain amount of restlessness involved in that. And also, uh, uh, I spent a good number of years trying just to get accepted on a very basic level uh, uh, for music publishers in New York. And uh, w when, you s when you do that for eight years and uh, you experience a lot of rejection of what you do, when you finally do get the chance to do things, the tendency is that you're willing to take the chance and to do them. Um, and so when, uh, when an opportunity to write a, a, a score for a film comes up, um, of course I want to do it, you know, even if it means that I'm forced to act in the film and, you know, learn about that. Yes, I want to do that, and to, and to do a special on television is, is another kind of experience. And, and Broadway and uh, Las Vegas, they're all new experiences, and I, I want to do them. And there's so many things I haven't done yet. In those years back in New York when you were working, I guess, in Tin Pan Alley, trying to write songs for other people, uh, what led you to that? What was it that first made, gave, it was exciting to you about expressing yourself in a song as a child? Do you remember when, you, when music first became important to you? Was there a record or was there a, an artist that you kind of like really responded to? Uh, I'm sure there were. I listened to radio. I, I had a few records when I was a kid. Uh, uh, I had a few Weavers albums. Uh, those were the first albums that I ever owned. Um, there were all kinds of uh, uh, people who had influences on me. Uh, uh, but I, I don't know. I never thought seriously about writing or uh, being in music and, until I got into my teens and uh, I started to study guitar and then I, I started to study piano a little bit and uh, I started to write songs almost immediately. I never thought about it, never planned on doing it. It just happened and came and I, I loved it. Mm -hmm. I loved doing it. And I just, I've, I haven't stopped since then. What was it that made it exciting to write a song? I mean, was it, a, it was a sense of stating identity, or was it a sense of kind of gaining popularity with friends, you know, around? Or did you mean, did it, was fame kind of like the goal? Or what was it that made you do that versus try to you know, write, write, write novels or, or play baseball or you know, whatever else you might have turned to at that time, do you think? Uh, I don't know, but there is something uh, inherently exciting in writing a piece of music. I don't, I don't know if I really even thought at the beginning that it had anything to do with my life or uh, was a form of expression. There was just something that felt good about doing it, and, and I continued to do it. You were real shy, though, weren't you, as a, as a teenager? Uh, yeah, I mean, I wasn't uh, uh, unusually shy. I'm not well, I mean, the pushiest kind of person, but uh, I had friends, and uh, we went to parties and dated, just like uh, hmm. like everybody. What did your family think of when you were you know, aiming toward being a songwriter? Was there an encouragement, or did they want you to do something else? Well, I kind of split it until I got through college. Uh, I went to uh, NYU for three years, and while I was there, I was writing and uh, bringing the music around to music publishers. That's uh, I split that, uh, and... Uh, and going to school, mm -hmm. and also I was I was fencing at the same time. So, 
Um, I had three things that I could have done. I could have become a professional fencer, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, gone into music, which is what I dreamed about, but I, n I never really seriously thought it was possible. Mm. Uh, uh, I never really did until it started to happen. I just did it because I loved it. Mm. You, you, you had rejection, though, as a songwriter, initially, when you were trying to write for other people. Uh, sure. So did you get discouraged and say, well, it just isn't going to work out, and do you want to try something else, or did, what kept you going at that? I think just the fact that I love doing it. Even the rejection, I mean, when you write something that you love, and you bring it into somebody and they say, well, we don't want to record this, or this isn't what we want, and so forth. I mean, how many times can you take that? You know, it doesn't seem like that's going to eventually uh, be too painful to keep going back to those people and stuff. And, uh, well, I thought that they were right. I thought their criticisms of the songs were right, and I was a beginner, and I was just learning, and uh, uh, it wasn't discouraging at all. So there was a certain maturity you had, uh, in, even at that time? I mean, uh, maybe. Maybe that's what you'd call it. Uh, I mean, I was very critical about what I was writing, but uh, uh, certainly people who knew music uh, uh, were even more critical in a different way, and uh, I received criticism for, for all of those years, and I felt I, felt I learned a great deal from it. and. Uh, uh, it was never discouraging. It was very, very exciting time for me that whole period because, uh, because I, I was doing what I wanted to do. I think more than anything else. Was it hard to begin singing? Did you? Were you was it? Uh, were you felt self-conscious at first about that? Or? Not really. Singing has always come easy for me. I've been singing since I was a little boy, long before I I started to write. Uh, and of course, working as a writer uh, and making demos, making demonstration records, mm -hmm. which I made hundreds of. I felt very much at ease in a recording studio and in front of a microphone. I had, uh, mm -hmm. had hundreds of chances to make my own demos and do my own songs. Uh, so it was all part of the uh, learning experience, and, and singing was a natural thing for me. And I, I, I've always sung. <laughs> Brenda Vaccaro for Playtex Tampons. I think it's important to know the facts about tampons, to use them intelligently, and to know what you're doing. Let me tell you why I like Playtex best. Only Playtex tampons have a double-layered design. I like that. And Playtex knows we're not all the same or want the same kind of tampon, so you can choose the one that's right for you. I like that, too. And I like knowing you just can't buy a better tampon protection than Playtex tampons or Playtex deodorant tampons. And that's the truth. Playtex, a name I can count on, and so can you. The new Bic Roller feels so smooth, you don't just write, you go with the flow. I am against this here, Bill, but uh, sometimes you gotta go with the flow. Hey, can I borrow your pen? Uh, my markers turn to mush. Philip, you gotta go with the flow. The new Bic Roller lets you go with the flow and go and go, because our point won't turn to mush no matter how hard you push. Wilson, 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 and Wilson are going with the flow. The Bic Roller, go with the flow. here long enough, eventually you want to put your toe in the water and see if you can do it. And from a point of view of, uh, of a performer, uh, knowing about films and learning about that uh, whole process, I think it's important. Um, this whole experience of making The Jazz Singer was an extraordinary experience for me. I still haven't absorbed all of it. Uh, it was one of the greatest learning experiences I've ever had, not only in a, in a creative way, but also in a very personal way. Uh, I was forced to do things that I had never uh, done before, uh, including finding the discipline to work certain hours every day, which is basically what the movie business is all about. Uh, 
learning to work for long stretches of time, learning to, uh, to memorize pages and pages of dialogue, mm. and to be able to do them with some kind of confidence. Uh, it was quite an experience, and uh, uh, I think it was good for me also. When I saw the jazz singer, the, the whole idea of the identity crisis of the person struggling against different cultures um, and trying to find a balance for himself, I was thinking, I, and I said it would have been a perfect song for that film, you know, with a, with mm -hmm. a slight variation. Because, and, and then after a while, I realized Love on the Rocks in a sense, expresses some of that same emotion. You know, it's, it's that person is trying, because I think of Love on the Rocks not so much as a, a love song to somebody, but as a, almost a, a performer talking to the audience, saying they need you and they want you, and also then they turn their back on you. So it's like this constant um, uh, struggle for affection in that way. Did, does, do those songs have any, uh, I mean, is Love on the Rocks kind of a, um, parallel song in any way to you with I Am I Sad? Uh, I think in a sense it, it probably is, but it's really for the uh, ear of the beholder to uh, to interpret that. Mm -hmm. uh, it is. It's, it's kind of a lost uh, song, you know. I put that in my category of lost. So I'm anxious to get out in front of a live audience again. Uh, I felt very, very uh, much caged while I was doing this film. I wanted to get out. I wanted to do the music. Uh, as a matter of fact, they let me off one afternoon to work with my band, and uh, uh, <laughs> when I came back to the set, I was so upset. It was the first time in five weeks. I said, you know, enough of this acting already. Let, let's do some music. And, uh, of course, all the scenes are planned in on specific days and so on and so forth. But uh, I was anxious to get back to the music, and I, I am now. I want to get back on stage. I want to get back in front of an audience. As soon as I've recuperated from this experience, I, I will go out. Uh, you used to talk about, you read a lot of books, Gershwin, Stephen Foster, to kind of see how they, if you learn anything from the way they lived, not so much the way they wrote and so forth, because uh, you had to, you've always had this kind of idea of a, of a long-term career. Uh, is that still something in your mind? I mean, did you, did, you, did you find something from reading their books, either mistakes they made or, or uh, good moves they made that kind of gave them that, that longevity? Um, well, first of all, Stephen Foster died uh, uh, in a, you know, the Bowery in, in New York uh, of tuberculosis. He was penniless and, you know, almost, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so uh, that kind of thing you want to avoid. You want to be able to live your life out and create your work and, and end it all with some kind of dignity. So uh, you learn that from, uh, from Stephen Foster's experience. Uh, I've read books about all kinds of writers and performers because I, I'm part of that. I, I want a sense of what that was like and how these people lived and how their lives turned out. I, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to learn from that. Mm -hmm. But um, you, you just never know. I've been very lucky for the last uh, 15 years. Uh, whether it'll go for another 15 years or not, or people will stand for it anymore, I don't know. It could end tomorrow. Uh, if it does, uh, I've had a nice, long, tremendous run. I couldn't ask for any more than that. But I'm going to keep plugging away. I love writing. It's part of what I do. And uh, I love performing now, too. So that uh, as long as there is an audience out there uh, that appreciates what I do, uh, I'll be out there and working. One thing is you feel comfortable being a performer on stage and making records and so forth. But somewhere along the line, you became a sex symbol, too. I mean, women screaming and all that kind of stuff. Does that kind of th uh, throw you off balance a bit, uh, that people look at people like that way? Because you were basically kind of a private person for a long time. Uh, well, you know, when you s step out on stage, you're open for everybody's interpretation of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I don't take a lot of it too seriously. I mean, I certainly don't take the sex symbol thing too seriously. I think it's funny. Uh, um, and great, you know, if, uh, uh, if, if that's part of what it is, and that's fine, you know. Um, whatever gets people into that audience to listen to the music is great. And uh, You used to worry a few years ago about privacy. If you went on television, if you did a television special, my gosh, you're not going to be able to walk into a drugstore. Because like, the great tragedy of pop music in our time is Elvis Presley, what happened uh, to him. And so I'm sure that was a, uh, a worry you had, because you, you had a great thing going for you. You were this superstar who could still live like a regular person when they walked yeah. around. Did that, when you made the television shows, the specials and stuff, did that change? Was it where you had to kind of restrict your activity a bit after that? It did change a little bit. Uh, I became more recognizable, and now with the movie, uh, it's even 
even worse. But it hasn't changed enough so that it would affect my life. Uh, I, I live a, a very normal life, and that's the way I want it. I've heard people, you know, say that type of thing before, but they end up succumbing to the temptations of living a different kind of life. Yeah. Have you been tempted to, you know, is there a time some of your life where you, you could have made, you know, the wrong moves or the wrong steps? Uh, I have made a lot of wrong moves. And I, I've I mean, not career-wise, of... career but it kind of, you know, more emotionally and so forth that you think uh, could, have, could have made you become more this kind of uh, destructive person in your own life. I think everybody has those, those uh, tendencies, you know, to be self-destructive, to... Uh, to be fearful, uh, to be insecure, especially uh, uh, when you're a, uh, you know, a public figure in one way or another. Uh, I've resisted them only because basically I am a writer. Mm. I don't need anything else than a pad and a pencil and a guitar. I don't need anything or, um, you know, that's what I need. I did it for a long time before anybody accepted it, and I'll continue to do it even if people don't accept it anymore because it's what I do. It's what I love doing. Yeah, how about music? Do you listen to other performers? Do you listen to radio much, or do you go out to see people much? I've seen you wait on Jennings concerts and different things around town over, over the years. Yeah, uh, I listen to the radio. I listen to records. I have all kinds of albums, uh, interesting new releases, people that uh, you know I haven't heard before, and I want to hear what they're doing. Or, uh, but mostly the music I'm involved in is my own music. So the music that I would listen to today would probably be uh, songs that I'm working on now, uh, tracks that I've recorded uh, uh, for upcoming albums and records. Um, that's what I do, and that's that's the kind of music I listen to. When I'm finished with my music, it's difficult for me to go and, you know, listen to other people's music. I tend to be very self-focused, very, very highly focused on what I'm doing. You seem as comfortable as I've ever seen you. Do you is is that a true reflection of your uh, insides and so forth? I mean, is, you know, are things pretty going pretty well in your life now? You think? I think so. I think things are going very well. I mean. Uh, the album is being accepted very widely. Uh, people seem to love the, uh, the music on it. Uh, so I feel good about that. The album itself was a major production. There were all kinds of orchest orchestral combinations involved in there, from male choirs to large symphonic things to little rock and roll R&B bands. Um, and uh, I feel good about that. I mean. Uh, uh, I really do, and, and the acceptance of the movie has been very strong. It's opening up in England this uh, past week and uh, getting tremendous responses, and uh, so I do feel very good about that. But uh, in another few weeks, that will be past. It'll be past uh, history, and I'll be on to uh, whatever the next project is. So there'll be another platinum record in here, and the door will be closed. Uh, okay. I hope so. I hope so. Okay, thanks very much for spending the time. It's always nice to talk to you, and I hope people enjoyed uh, the conversation. Midnight Special will continue in just a moment. Mmm, it's a great feeling. That's what I've always said about Pearl Drops. But now I've got another reason for saying it. New Pearl Drop Cinnamon. It gives me two special whiteners to polish my teeth and help keep them their whitest. And a breath freshening cinnamon taste <sighs> that leaves my whole mouth feeling as good as my teeth. Mmm. <laughs> it's a great feeling. Pearl Drops. Original, spearmint, or new cinnamon. I'm not as heavy. I am thinner than I was. And I look better. And I feel good. Yvonne Jones has lost weight on the control diet plan. Control works and without stimulant. It's controlling my appetite and that enables me to lose weight. The thing that I, I think I liked best was that there's no stimulant in control. Control capsules contain no stimulant, only the strongest, most effective appetite suppressant available without prescription. I've lost weight and I would highly recommend control. Want to lose weight without stimulant? Take control. Mustang! The sky's the limit for 1981. Now Mustangs available with a rakish new tea roof. Mustang, born to run with the wind. Sure-footed to handle quick turns. Mustang, a world of high gas mileage you might not expect from such a high-spirited car. Mustang! Capture a Mustang, America's most popular sports car. From the world of better ideas at Ford. What's up at the amusement park? 
Vave up the fresh and freshen up. Vave up the fresh. Up, up the fresh, up, up the fresh. Talk about up. Talk about flavor waves for big, refreshing flavor through the gum. Thumbs up. Liquid center, too. It's really refreshing. Vave up the fresh and freshen up. Vave up the fresh. Up, up the fresh, up, up the fresh. Freshen up with